Uh, the best advice I could give is the advice that no one wants to hear, and that is you have to be out in the weather constantly. You must realize that people lived and prospered for thousands of years without the invention of air conditioning, and they really didn't think that much of it. It is a bit of a temperature shock when you go from your car, which is 60 degrees with the AC cranked, you know, to outside where it's 110. That's what, a 50 degree temperature dispersion. And if you do that, yes, it hits you pretty hard. But, you know, if you don't have air conditioning, you're not going through a 50 degree temperature change. You're going through like a 10 or 20 degree temperature change. And I will tell you guys, my first summer in Texas, which was actually one of the hottest it's been in the time that I've lived here, which is about five years at this point, uh, that first summer was one of the hottest ones we've had, and I have never felt more comfortable in a warm environment, and the way in which I did that was I was never in the air conditioning. Uh, what I meant by that is I worked outside and I worked long days. I was just getting going. I really didn't have all that much money, so I was I had to hustle. I would be working in the shop for minimum eight, probably more like 10 hours a day on average. And uh, the truck I was driving at the time, uh, because I bought a shop truck that had some miles on it. And the main thing is anybody who's owned a 99 uh, to whenever the mid-generation refresh was, maybe 2008. Anybody who's owned the 99 to roughly 08 Ford Super Duty can tell you that the air conditioning is now one of the strong points of that truck, especially mine, because it was like, uh, you know, 10, 11 years old when I got it. So it was really not putting out all that much cold air. So long story short, you know, I'd be working in the shop, which is obviously not a temperature controlled environment. And then I'd be driving an hour there and an hour back each day, not in air conditioning, just with the windows rolled down on the highway. And because I was a pretty much a broke kid at the time, I uh, didn't really want to spend the extra money on running the air conditioner at home uh, when I wasn't there, which was most of the time. So I simply did it and then I'd get home and I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna get home at eight o'clock at night and turn on the air conditioning and wait like two hours for the house to cool down so I can go to bed, especially when the summers, the summer nights here are really nice. It's like, you know, 70, 80 degrees. And uh, I just, you know, lay down and go to sleep in that. And so I was pretty much never in the air conditioning and I pretty much never felt hot. I mean, like I was pretty conscious that I was getting like hot and sweaty when I was working on stuff. But other than that, it's just, you know, you, you get after maybe eight or 10 weeks, probably not even that, probably more like six or eight weeks of that, there comes a point where that's just the new normal. It's just like being in your house with the thermostat set on 72 degrees or whatever is normal for you right now. Well, being outside, you know, being in the shade of a steel building like I was when it's, you know, 90 degrees out there or something, that's just the new normal. You really don't think anything of it and it was, the best uh, summer yet. Uh, so a few other tips. If you are um, going, if you know for a fact that you're going to be doing a lot of work when it's uh, really hot outside, try to give your body some time to acclimate. This is another thing that I had to mention. So right now I'm hauling home fertilizer. I got about 2,900 pounds, 3,000 pounds roughly on that skid back there. And uh, so what I need to do is move this 50 pounds at a time because they're 50 pound bags move this onto a trailer and then take that trailer out into one of my fields and dump the bags into the fertilizer spreader on my tractor so basically i'm gonna have to move 6,000 pounds of fertilizer 50 pounds at a time on a day that's uh, somewhere in the mid 90s with not a cloud in the sky and what i'm going to do is uh, actually i'd be doing it right now if i wasn't making this video is to turn off the ac in this truck and drive the remaining 45 minutes home um, you know, with the windows rolled down, so I'm pretty used to the warmer temperature. This way I'm not going through like a 40 degree temperature change and then uh, moderately hard labor. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a gradual temperature change and everything's fine. Uh, the next thing I would give advice wise is something that is uh, more mental. I uh, spent a lot of time on a farm in my childhood, so this wasn't really as much of a burden for me as it is for a lot of people who A, move here, or B, just get into the skilled trade, so they're really outside working for the first time in their soft life. And that is kind of a mental thing. You just have to accept that you're gonna get all sweaty and nasty and just not worry about it because I've seen a lot of people get kind of huffy and puffy and ragey, you know. I've only been working for 10 minutes and I'm like soaked through, you know, two shirts and I'm all sweaty and nasty. You just have to tell yourself that's gonna happen and just don't worry about it. Uh, you know, just make plans to, you know, just 
change and rinse off before you go do whatever you're gonna do when you get off of work or whatever. It's, it's really more of a mental thing. You just have to accept that. And, uh, and if you can accept that you're gonna be all sweaty and nasty and you're gonna stink, then uh, it's just, it's not that bad. But otherwise, um, yeah, there's that. And the main thing is, and I know this is kind of like motherly advice. Sorry, everyone, I'm going around this curve at grandpa speed one because in all ways other than the physical I've pretty much morphed into what I thought was an incredibly insensitive and politically incorrect grandpa who I later realized was right about basically everything uh, but anyway yeah uh, the main thing is to stay very very hydrated I will tell you guys what I like to consume when I'm out there and this is actually something that mechanic Steve uh, helped me figure out. He said in the days before Gatorade and sports drinks and everything, uh, you know, obviously, Pete, what happened? This road is completely washed out. That's what happens when you get close to 100 inches of rain in a year. Uh, yeah, so uh, anyway, in the days before sports drinks and whatnot, the way we know them, you know, obviously people were still working outside and what he said that his, I don't know, uncle or someone used to do, because he used to do roofing work, so he'd be on like a dark tar shingle roof like that when it's 110 outside, probably like 120 or 130 up there on that roof. Um, what they used to do is take some type of fruit juice and water and mix salt into it with ice and that works really, really well. It's best to use, uh, I think someone told me use like an iodized salt or a sea salt or whatever, I'm not a, you know, an amateur chemist or whatever. I'm sure someone can elaborate on that a little bit. But what I like to do is, I personally, I prefer either lemon juice or like a cranberry juice type thing. Uh, what I'll do when I'm out on a tractor is I'll get those, uh, I don't know how big they are, probably like more than two liter, roughly, better the better part of a gallon jug of cranberry juice or whatever. I'll put it in my fridge, I'll drink that until it's about half empty. And then what I'll do is I'll shove it all the way full of ice and then water down the rest until it fills up. And so it's like, you know, half, cranberry juice and then like uh, you know a third lemon or I'm sorry a third ice and then the balance is filtered tap water with a little bit of salt in it you shake that up really well and it stays cool because the ice melts and waters down the rest of it I mean you can drink it straight I just it's kind of dank if you ask me I like to have a little water in that but anyway the point is when you sweat you know and you'll see it when you uh you know it's the end of the day and there's like white stains all over your t-shirt that's the salt leaving your body through sweat so you really need to replenish that if you just drink straight water um then uh you know you're you're not really replenishing the salt and someone told me that even adds a lot of the electrolyte stuff and unlike consuming gallons of you know powerade or whatever your preference is throughout the course of the day this is a lot cheaper i think it's a lot healthier because that stuff has all kinds of artificial nonsense in it and uh, and it's just it's just a lot easier. So personally, that's what I do. The other thing is, uh, if you are gonna do this in smaller quantities, you can take like a, a glass of water with some ice in it. And the ice really makes things more refreshing than even like refrigerator temperature water. And you dump in some lemon juice, preferably not from concentrate, and a, and a lot of salt. Basically, in this mixture, you want to drink the water with the salt in it to replenish you. The water obviously replenishes the water and the salt replenishes the salt that you sweated out. And the lemon basically just kills the taste of the salt. So, you know, you'll learn to balance those things pretty well because the first few times you do that and you're basically drinking like a quart of sweat, essentially, uh, that's rather unpleasant. But you get the lemon percentage up there pretty well and it mixes really well. So. Uh, so anytime there's warm weather, which here is from like April through November pretty much, these two things are most of what I sustain myself on outside of coffee, of course, anytime that I'm working outside. And uh, if I, I do drink sports drinks, but it's really rare. At most I'll have like one a day if I'm really hitting it hard outside. But I just, I try to avoid anything with, uh, with a lot of artificial ingredients in it. And um, so anyway, these are just a few ramblings to recap. Get yourself acclimated to uh, the climate as much as you can by being in the air conditioning as little as possible. And you know what? I've even heard 
the same uh, about this, but working the other way, like in what, what I would think of as a, an extremely cold environment. Uh, I think it's Andrew Camarado who has an awesome channel, by the way. He talked about this once. He's like, you know, people, people ask me if my shop is heated and it isn't. I just, you know, I just force myself to work out here when it's uncomfortably cold the first few weeks of cool weather every year. And then like, I don't even really notice it after that. It's pretty much the way it worked here for me, but with the heat. So avoid air conditioning uh, whenever possible. Likewise, avoid going from a very cold environment like an air conditioned vehicle to moving 6,000 pounds of material, 50 pounds at a time. And uh, you know, avoid doing stuff like that. Stay hydrated with the aforementioned mixtures and just accept that you're gonna get kind of nasty and sweaty. The other thing is to the, uh, shall we say, larger folks in the audience, the ones who might not be in the best of shape, uh, something else that I realized is that the healthier someone is, the less nasty and rank they're gonna get when they sweat. If you're around a fat guy who's sweat, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to sugarcoat this. If you're around someone who's kind of fat and unhealthy and they get all sweaty, that is like, you know, it's like an animal diet. It's terrible, it's an awful smell. But if you're around people who eat a pretty, pretty natural diet and like they're more or less in shape and they make an effort to take care of themselves, it's really not that bad. Um, so that's another benefit of trying to have a pretty natural diet. I'm not exactly a health nut, but at least I make an effort most of the time. And just doing that will make it a lot more bearable, I think. And uh, so long story short, you know, I'm just, like I said, I don't mean to come down hard on anyone, but this is just, you know, I've lived here five years. These are things that I've learned and uh, I just want to share it with you guys. So anyway, if you're wondering how to survive your first brutal southern summer if you're you know midwestern or whatever here are some tips and uh random video of the day thanks for watching don't forget to rate comment and subscribe for more i'm gonna listen to some non-youtube approved music and uh that was my turn actually and uh so that's another problem i gotta fix and have a nice night